Hi, welcome to Market in a Minute. We think the market needs some clarity before it can go significantly higher. You know, the markets are back to its old high, valuations are high. We're in a seasonally tough period, right? Uh, August, September, we cover that in a lot of detail, and potentially October. We have an election. Gosh, this election could get really ugly. So the Federal Reserve meets on Wednesday. I think it's extremely important as to what they communicate. So they should go 50 basis points to keep the market happy. Um, so we'll see what happens, but I think we're kind of stuck at the high of the markets currently, and any negative news will bring the markets down potentially. So Federal Reserve meetings are really important. Might be a sell on the news event. Energy stocks to us, table pounding by. I mean, these the, the sector looks great. So it's an oversold group. It hasn't moved all year. It's pulled back really nicely. Really attractive prices. A lot of stocks. Valuations are, are great. And there's some catalysts out there. And then um, lastly, we're going to save the last because these I, we've got some really interesting biotechnology stocks. Huge upside. We just we're, we're in New York for a few days. Spent some time with a lot of different CEOs of, of uh, biotechnology companies and think we've got uh, a nice update for you. So the stock market update. On on Wednesday, you know, it's 50-50 whether or not they'll cut 25 or 50 uh, basis points. And let me walk you through why the market needs 50. Okay, so if you look back at the June dot plot, so this is a co compilation of all the Fed Fund governors, what they expect to occur so this is their expectation i think this is a good guide to start with so the federal funds rate expectation for 2025 in june was a for a 4.1 percent federal funds rate so the federal funds rate is currently 5.4 so they expected 4.1 that sounded pretty reasonable pretty strong economy so they thought you know, no problem with the employment market, inflation coming down so they could take their, their time about cutting rates. Now the economy is weakening. Uh, who knows how fast it's weakening. The bond market is now the two-year treasury, which is the prime indicator for the Fed funds rate. These are basically linked together. So the two-year treasury is at 3.5%. So that's almost you know, two percent below where the federal funds rate is currently, so that's a problem. So if the federal, if the Federal Reserve does twenty-five basis points, the market's probably going to say that's not enough, and start to think about recession. If they do fifty and convey that they're going to bring it down more in line with where the market is, the market's going to like it. We might break above the, you know the highs we are currently at in the, in the stock market. So. One thing that uh, is concerning, as you know, we've had this inverted yield curve where the short end has been higher than the long end for the longest period in history. Now the short end has come down and is below the long end like it should be, right? Uh, historically, this has been a really good indicator that a recession is imminent. So we don't like that in terms of uh, this occurring. We think it has to occur, right? But this is generally the timing where the recession starts to, to kick in. The beige book was really ugly a couple of weeks ago. A lot of the regions were, you know, nine of the 12 regions were uh, in, in negative territory, negative growth. So it kind of feels to us like potentially we may be at the start of a recession. The geopolitical risk are is very high. You know, uh, Iran um, potentially has a nuclear weapon. Um, the Saudis don't like that. Neither do the, the uh, Israelis. Um, Iran has been uh, supplying Russia with missiles. Oh, they they haven't in the past thirty days, but they have historic. You know, during the, the this war, so NATO and the U.S. don't like it. So maybe there is some catalyst to take some action against Iran in a number of different ways. They have a pretty high, a pretty significant amount of oil they supply to the markets. And obviously so does Russia. 
So um, we see the political risk, uh, geopolitical risk of being high. The political risk is as high as well. So the, the big political risk that we see is if Harris wins the election, the Trump tax cuts expire in 2025, and that'll be really negative for, for GDP growth and valuations of stock prices. So that would not be a, a very positive event to occur. Strictly Harris being elected, her other proposals don't really matter because you'll need Congress to approve them. You know, that's not likely uh, like the unrealized gains tax. That'll never happen. The Republicans want to push through what's called the Safeguard American Voter Eligibility Act, the SAFE Act. So w the, the current spending bill uh, is expiring. So that needs to be re-upped in the next two weeks. And there are, the Repu Republicans want to attach the, the SAFE Act to the bill. And the Democrats are saying, we don't think so. So we think the Democrats have the upper hand. We'll see how stubborn the, the Republicans are on this. They think it's a die on that hill sort of uh, issue for the election. So we have another political risk out there, uh, hard to assess. Mayorkas, I did, we didn't know this, but Mayorkas is in charge or oversees the Secret Service through his agency. We, uh, that, to us, that explains all the problems that have been occurring with another Trump assassination. And also, this is going to you know, heighten the risk for Harris as well. So I think you know, maybe some crazy uh, other side of the aisle person might say, okay, let's, let's pay back Harris for all these problems. And those people tend to be pretty damn good shots. So all this kind of concerns us. We're concerned about a black swan event occurring uh, in this election. The technicals of the market. So uh, we're back to the old high. So our algorithm is actually positive. You know, it's um, the markets are above the the uh, 20 day, 50 day, 100 day, 200 day. But it's also back to the old high where it just doesn't seem it, like it can penetrate through that. So, again, there's some fundamental issues that um, that are, are of concern. We have a high valuation. We've talked about that a lot and we have concerns about the economy. Um, the Fed has to be pretty aggressive on cutting rates, in our opinion, to give the market enough momentum to break through this old high and to accept these higher valuations. So when the market moves basically sideways, um, we think that using a oscillator is probably the best indicator. So we've been moving sideways since July when we hit that high. Um, and so this is the oscillator down below here. So as you can see, when it hits a overbought condition, it indicates it's time to sell. Usually it takes a couple of weeks before it really kicks in. So you can see, you know, the oscillator kicked in, started to lose momentum, and then the market sells off. And so same way on, the, uh, on a buy signal as we got in August. So we think the oscillator is a very effective tool and uh, during these sideways patterns, and in particular during this uh, August, September, October period with, these, uh, with this elevated market. So we're not overbought yet, but we're getting there again. Um, so as we start to lose momentum, you might see um, this indicator turn, turn negative. So just keep that in mind that um, the playbook in this soft seasonal period is to sell overbought conditions. Um, energy. Why do we like energy? Right. So oil prices have pulled down. It's taken the risk out of the markets. Uh, and the, the sector itself, the energy stocks, are down about 13% from the high of April. There's been no returns year to date. A lot of stocks have been crushed. So really good stocks being crushed. We see a potential catalyst on the on the you know global geopolitical uh, spectrum in terms of maybe there's some events that happen around the world. You know, um, this is an interesting point. So when Trump says he can end the Ukraine-Russian war in a day, what does he mean by that? He means he's going to tell China and India, we're going to slap their goods 
with such high tariffs, they, they won't sell anything in the United States unless they quit buying Russian oil. And then what's Russia going to do? Russia's going to say, okay, we'll stop the war. So in the meantime, there might be a pretty, you know, there might be a jump in oil prices while all this is occurring. It'll get resolved fairly quickly, but there's pressure to the upside on oil. We think whoever uh, gets in office, Trump or Harris, that there's an upper bias to the price of energy. Um, by the way, you know, uh, Biden has depleted the Strategic Petroleum Reserve by about 50%. So, granted, it's not a lot of oil versus what's consumed every day, but it, it will impact the price of oil as that's uh, refilled again. And it will happen. Uh, definitely will happen. So, the group itself trades for about 10 to 11 times earnings, where the market on this year's earnings is about 23 times earnings. So, big discount. Um, it's a small sector. So. If if a large fund wants to put money into the group, it's going to push these stocks up quite a bit. I think energy is only about 3% of the S&P 500 these days. So it's, it's a very small part of the overall S&P. And if you want to put money into this, you're definitely going to move the stocks. So Slumberger is the Cisco or in, uh, NVIDIA of its time. It's a great company, great technology. This stock, even, even in a tough energy market, should be 50% higher than where it is currently. It should trade at least 15 times earnings. Stock's trading at 10. Um, we like this stock for a multiple year hold, as well as uh, Apache, APA, um, sells at five times earnings. If you get any source of price to the price of oil, this stock's gonna at least double in price. And then Oxy. This is Warren Buffett's favorite stock, right? Um, his company owns 29% of Oxy, and they have, you know, Berkshire Hathaway has $277 billion in cash. So to buy the rest of the company, you only need $30 billion to do it. I think, you know, kind of peering around the corner, I think it's high probability that that happens at these depressed valuations. Now, technology, uh, biotechnology. So Vivek Ramanswamy spoke at the conference. Man, this guy can talk fast, okay? So um, I was impressed, he had some good points. Basically what he said, you have to make the FDA more user friendly. You have to take out the bureaucracy. You gotta let people you know, try these advanced drugs you know, if, if they need them. Um, get the drugs to market faster. You know, make the approval process faster. Why does it take a year for the FDA to review a drug? I mean, it should take a week, right? Maybe 10 days, but not a year. So uh, I was very impressed. I think if Trump wins, this guy will probably be uh, put on his head as the F head of the FDA. Obviously, he has a uh, business background, venture capital background, understands biotech very well. I think it would be um, extremely positive for the biotechnology stocks and even more so for the small cap biotechnology stocks. So um, Alzheimer was a big focus of the conference. Um, we spent a lot of time with An Anavex, um, if I said that right, why these companies have such weird names, I'll never know, AVXL. So hung out with the CEO of the company quite a bit. Uh, very impressed uh, with what this company has done. They have a uh, phase three complete data already out there. Data looks good. Data is, the data is very approvable. Um, shows good efficacy. It's an oral drug, no safety issues. So much better than the two drugs, by, one for Biogen and one from Lilly that are on the market. If this is approved in Europe, and approved in the U.S., um, no doubt about it, this stock is going much, much higher. AVXL, if you look at the chart, this stock's been as high as $30 not too long ago. It's down at five, and I think the stock will start moving its way back up again. Checkpoint, okay, everybody uh, that's been following us know we've been following Checkpoint for a while. We really like their drug. Um, should have been approved last year. Again, bureaucracy at the FDA, 
uh, kind of a paperwork issue by their contract manufacturer. It's going to get approved. Highly likely it's going to get approved, I should say, December 28th. Okay. We think not long after that, this company will be acquired for maybe three times the current price that it, that it is currently trading at. CRDL Cardio, uh, this is a, a, a company that has two cardiology drugs. Uh, they need a little bit of financing, uh, but they have good data. You know, soon they have two phase three drugs. They need a little bit of financing to get these phase three drugs financed. Not much, maybe five million. Uh, we think maybe a big drug will come in and buy maybe a significant position in this company. Uh, but it's uh, very interesting, and uh, I could go into more detail with you if you like at some point. But I like this company a lot. A lot, you know, low valuation, great management team. Um, prime acquisition target and then uh, CALC um, Calcium, Calcimedica uh, this is for uh, acute pancreatitis it's about a billion or two billion dollar market they'll have some additional data on October 27th they're moving into phase three their big drug is something that really needs to be uh, on the market as quickly as possible is for acute kidney injury. Uh, the market really needs this. It's a 10 to $20 billion market. <clears throat> They're now in phase two, okay? So this stock is only 50 million in size. It has a silly valuation versus what they're going after. Like this one a lot as well. And then Milestone uh, Therapeutics. So uh, this is a company that has a, a nasal administered drug for PSVT, again, a uh, heart treatment, and will likely get approved on March 27th. Again, this is one of those things that if there was a, a friendly FDA to business, this is, would have probably been approved a year or two ago. But anyhow, they went back and redid their trial. Um, the data looks good. They're all set up for approval. Why does it take so long for approval? Again, um, that is not their big drug either. They have a um, AFib drug moving into phase three. This is a huge market. Um, both of these drugs will cut down the cost of people with uh, heart disease and these episodes occurring. So this has huge potential as well. We are currently a little bit more offensive in, in general than what we have been on the markets. Um, again, we're looking at uh, a Wednesday for a key uh, catalyst for markets. I think the, the economy is slowing down, valuations are high, but there are two really good sectors to put some money into. So the small cap biotechnology space, even the large cap biotechnology space looks really good to us, but the small cap biotechnology space is a table, founding, buy. And then um, the energy stocks. Again, we like those a lot. Um, really undervalued group and uh, catalysts to come with some really high quality stocks uh, that are really cheap that you can own for multiple years. So if you, if you would click, click like, come to um, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's the best way of getting this information. Come to my website, Patrick Adam CFA, and sign up for a hard copy of Market Minute. We'll send that to you as well every week. Take care.